What is up, Chiefs Kingdom? I'm Haley Lewis, and this is Chiefs News Daily. We wrap up all the news surrounding the Kansas City Chiefs in just 10 minutes. Episodes drop Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Time, on the Kansas City Sports Network YouTube channel. Basically, it's your way to stay on top of all things you need to know in order to follow along with your favorite team, the reigning Super Bowl champs. Well, while you're here, make sure you like and subscribe, plus join our LLC, the Loyal Listeners Club. It's free, it keeps you in the loop, it allows you to chat and interact with myself and other listeners. That link to join is under this video in the description. Let's get into this Tuesday episode. This episode brought to you by Unified Healing. Well, today the Chiefs are going to host their local prospect day, inviting top talent from around the area to showcase their skills in front of the Super Bowl champs. General Manager Brett Veach has always put emphasis on keeping local talent from the Chiefs' own backyard when they can. According to Charles Goldman from A to Z Sports, not everyone who's invited to Pro Day will participate in workouts. Sometimes it's just another opportunity for prospects to meet the team and make an impression. Players currently on the Chiefs roster who attended Kansas City's Pro Day in the past are tight end Garrett Prince and cornerback Echo Boydo. According to KSNT's Glenn Kenley, four K-State offensive linemen are expected to be among those in attendance. Left guard Cooper Beebe, center Hayden Gillum, left tackle KT Leviston, and right tackle Christian Duffy. Other Wildcats expected to be in attendance are wide receiver Phillip Brooks and tight end Ben Sinnott, who also shared this picture at the Chiefs practice facility just yesterday. Some Kansas Jayhawks also expected to be seen as well, linebacker Rich Miller Jr. and tight end Mason Fairchild, plus reports saying even quarterback Jason Bean has been invited. According to Goldman, there has been some talk that the talented athlete could make the switch to wide receiver at the next level. Other names reportedly attending today are Staley High School alum and Dartmouth defensive back Quinton Arello, Washburn wide receiver Colin Wilson, Central Missouri defensive lineman David Olahiga, and Mid-American Nazarene's defensive back, Anthony Sow. You can catch more names and updated prospects over on a to zsportscom Well, guys, the NFL Draft is just about two and a half weeks away. The Kansas City Chiefs getting ready for night one, pick at slot 32. More and more mock drafts continue to come out. Let's take a look at the latest. It seems the mock draft experts have narrowed down the Chiefs' first-round options to a few positions. First, let's start with wide receiver. PFF's Max Chadwick has Kansas City taking Georgia's Lad McConkey. Chadwick joins the recent trend of experts mocking McConkey to Kansas City, joining NFL Network's Lance Zerline and Adam Rake. Chadwick writes the addition of Marquise Brown certainly helped, but the Chiefs could still add more talent at wide receiver. McConkey is a route running technician with excellent quickness. McConkey recently joined Kay Adams on Up and Adams to talk about his best trait that he thought he has on the football field. Here what he has to say about your game but if you were rating yourself in madden what would you feel most comfortable Ooh. giving yourself a 99 in uh oh, oh like myself yeah. i thought you were talking about like my madden no. skills no. uh 99 um let's see don't, uh, don't be yeah, don't be no, humble think, here lad no i if i was gonna give my 90 give a 99 uh let's go let's, let's go route running route running a 99 uh, while cornerback has also been a popular position for mock draft experts since the chiefs traded away legerious steed Fox Sports' Nick Wright has Kansas City selecting Alabama's Kool-Aid McKinstry, while most recently NFL Network's Rhett Lewis has the Chiefs taking Missouri corner Ennis Rakestraw. Lewis writes, the trade of Legereus Sneed opens up a hole at one of the corner spots where Rakestraw, who's smooth in the pass game and physical against the run, would slot in well. Whose mock draft are you following along with, and who do you think the Chiefs should snag come later this month? Remember, if you want more NFL draft information as it pertains to the Chiefs, check out the link below for our KCSN draft guide. Also, be sure to join us on Sunday, April 28th up in Weston, Missouri at Holiday Distillery. We're going to have a spring tailgate party as we celebrate the closing of the NFL draft. There's going to be prizes, drinks, food, plus we're going to be there to celebrate the Chiefs newest class. Details are in the description below. Well, whether you're a world-class athlete or a podcaster like me, we all understand the importance of mental and physical well-being and proper recovery. That's why I'm excited that Unified Healing is sponsoring this episode of Chiefs News Daily. Unified Healing is a new and innovative global network of wellness centers powered by Energy Enhanced System, or EE System. Whether you're here in Kansas City or elsewhere, there are hundreds of locations across the globe. Access to a center is easy and affordable. Interested in experiencing the EE System technology for yourself? Go to unifiedhealing.com slash KCSN to learn more and find a center near you. That's U-N-I-F-Y-D healing.com slash KCSN. No material or testimonials on Unified Healing website are intended to be viewed as medical advice or substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. 
Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare providers with any questions you might have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen, including EE system. Well, as the draft inches closer, the Chiefs continue to scout out the best talent. One way of prepping for their draft boards is by hosting various players for visits at the Chiefs facility. The Chiefs are holding top 30 visits with various prospects right now, Jordan Foote explains on Sports Illustrated. These visits, capped at 30 for hosting purposes, allow organizations to bring in players for a variety of reasons. Examples of what takes place during top 30 visits include medical evaluations, interviews, film or conceptual work, facility tours, and the like. But continues, essentially these visits help team gather more information about prospects. It's important to keep in mind that a top 30 visit doesn't necessarily reflect a club's level of interest. Sometimes coaches and other staff simply want to get clarification on questions or concerns regarding players. Here is a full list of prospects reportedly scheduled or have already completed a top 30 visit with the Chiefs. Well, we got a few headlines roaming around on social media right now, one of them being the Chargers getting a lot of love. Again, shocking. All right, former NFL safety Dante Whitner joined the K. Adams show up in Adams, giving a lot of praise to the LA Chargers and Jim Harbaugh. Take a listen. Jim Harbaugh is going to have that team in the AFC Championship. What? You can rewind this during <laughs> championship weekend when? and replay Wait, when? this. When, 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 when? Let's, how many, how much time? First year. This year? This year. Jim Harbaugh is going to have the Chargers in the AFC Championship. Why? Well, because, first of all, he has his quarterback. And when you put Jim Carball with the quarterback, he's the quarterback whisperer, like he was with J.J. McCarthy, like he was with Colin Kaepernick, any of the quarterbacks that were under the tutelage of Jim Harbaugh, he figures out what your strengths are and he tailors his offense around that in the running game. And then his defense, they have, you know, Bosa on one side and then um, uh, the guy Mack, Khalil Mack mm -hmm. on the other side, along with the secondary and how fundamental and physical he demands his teams to be, I believe that Jim Harbaugh and, and the LA Chargers are going to be in the AFC Championship game. Okay, very high expectations for a first year coach, but go off. I get it, it's his former coach. Whitner actually played for him for three seasons with the San Francisco 49ers from 2011 till 2013. But hey, if you can take down the AFC contenders like the Chiefs, the Dolphins, the Ravens, and Houston Texans, by all means, we'll go back to the tape come January. Well, according to Jack Bear with Yahoo Sports, Kansas City superfan Xavier Babadar, aka Chiefsaholic, already faced a sentencing of up to 50 years in prison after pleading guilty to a string of bank robberies. Well, now he's on the hook for $10.8 million. He was also required to forfeit a signed painting of Patrick Mahomes that was recovered by the FBI. He's now being held without bond at Leavenworth Federal Prison in Kansas as he awaits sentencing. Right now, his sentencing hearing is scheduled for July 10th. Well, QB2 officially signed with the Chiefs last week, but how much will the backup be costing Kansas City? According to Tom Palacero of NFL Network, the one-year deal is going to carry a base value of $3.325 million, with $2.2 million fully guaranteed. Additionally, Wentz can earn up to $1.1 million on top in per-game active roster bonuses. After waiting until November to sign last season, Wentz is now in the clear. QB2 behind Patrick Mahomes, this of course is what Palacero shared on his Twitter account. All right, folks, that does it for another episode of Chiefs News Daily. Remember, join us on the LLC and get those questions in. And of course, make sure you like and subscribe right here on the KCSN YouTube channel. Also, submit your questions over on the LLC by Wednesday for a chance to get mentioned in the show on Friday. We love you guys staying involved. Have a great rest of your day. Go Chiefs.